Joining me is Dr. Hugh Klein, who is the study co-author for the PrEP Obstacles Scale uh, Abstract that was presented uh, part of the AIDS 2020 virtual sessions. And we're going to talk a little bit about the details and what it means uh, for the HIV community. But first and foremost, Dr. Klein, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I really appreciate the quick turnaround and just availability of expertise. And uh, PrEP has really highlighted a lot of my own discussions that I've been having this week. And a lot of the coverage we've been doing has been in great clinical breakthroughs and uh, some statewide strategies that we're putting in place now. So uh, maybe we could just start off, Dr. Klein, by talking a little bit about your team's study and what exactly the key findings were for it. Okay. Um, the goal of this project was to actually undertake a pilot study um, looking at PrEP among men who have sex with men. Uh, what we were trying to do is to get a better handle on why it is that more men are not using PrEP. Uh, very simple, very elemental question, but one that here we are almost 10 years into the existence of PrEP and still uptake is fairly low, even though it has been showing signs of increase in recent years. Um, so what we wanted to know is very simply why. Right, right. And, and what exactly did you guys come to in terms of conclusions from that? I think there are a number of things. Um, first of all, even though um, PrEP has been around a while, a sizable portion of the men that we interviewed, and there were 273 of them in this study, uh, a sizable portion of them had never heard of PrEP before. Wow. Uh, and that was, a little dismaying, I would, I would say. Um, we would hope that by this point in time, more people would have heard of it, but in our project, about three quarters, two thirds to three quarters had never heard of it before. Of the men who had heard about it, um, I'd say about a quarter of them really had a wrong impression or had some significant misimpressions of what PrEP is, what it does, what it doesn't do as well. Um, so those are two of the main things. If you're trying to understand why men aren't using PrEP or if they've never heard of it or if they've heard of it and they don't understand it, of course, those are very major obstacles. As part of what we did, we also looked at men's comfort level and interest level in learning more about PrEP from a variety of different sources. For example, if they now that they've heard about it from us, um, to what extent are they interested in learning more? Um, interest was moderate. I would say moderate, maybe moderately high if you want to be generous about it, but it certainly was not overwhelming. Yes, I want to find out about this. Um, we asked them, if you decide to look into this in the next few weeks, how likely are you to look for information from your friends, from sex partners, from online dating sites, from the internet? from your doctor, from the local health department, trying to get a sense of where, if anywhere, the guys are most likely to turn. Um, friends are their most likely source. Um, the internet was a likely source. Sex partners, not so much. The internet um, did okay. Their personal physicians. You've got mail. Sorry about that. Um, their personal physicians were fairly low. People were not generally willing to seek information from their doctors or from um, health clinics or uh, places like that. Um, they wanted basically to go to people they knew and trusted or places like the internet where they could kind of look around in private. But of course, there's some questions there because you don't necessarily know what you can and can't believe, what you can and can't trust when you find information strictly off of the internet. Right. Um, and then the, the next part of what we were looking at is people's perceptions of PrEP. Um, do you, as an example, do you think that it is something that is stigmatized? So we, had, we created two different scales for looking at this. One looks at perceived stigma associated with the possible use of PrEP. And then the other one is the specific topic of the paper that you contacted us about, and that's looking at potential obstacles or how men perceive the obstacles to using PrEP to be. Um, and what we found is that perceived stigma is fairly high and many of the guys actually in their mind thought that there would be a great number of obstacles to potentially adopting PrEP. So when you look at it in the gestalt, what you end up with is a fairly large number of guys who have never heard of it, 
for those who have heard of it, a lukewarm level of interest in finding out more about it, a general lack of comfort and commitment to finding out more, even among the men who were interested in finding out more about it, significant perceptions of stigma, and a perception that PrEP is likely to be difficult to use, to get access to, to make a commitment to. Wow. That's, that's so interesting, the findings, and um, obviously it kind of lends to a, a, a series of conclusions as to the, like the, I guess, the underlying mechanisms behind that. But the first one that comes to my mind, Dr. Klein, obviously is the stigma associated with it that, yeah. uh, I, I mean, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I imagine that um, men with HIV face a, a much greater stigma or feel the presence of a stigma much more greatly than, um, you know, other patients do, do they? I think if you're talking about an actual stigma for having HIV, yes. I think if you're talking about HIV looking means, into, yeah. if, you, if you're talking about looking into the possibility of adopting PrEP, what we actually found is that the guys who were already HIV infected were fairly aware of PrEP. They were much more likely than the guys who were currently HIV negative or who had not been tested in a while right. to be aware of PrEP. So it's the guys who need it the most who were the least aware of it. And then it was the guys who were HIV positive who were actually the ones who were least likely to stigmatize and least likely to perceive there to be obstacles to PrEP. It's the ones who knew the least about it who actually feared it the most. Right. And that's a kind of an ugly prospect that those of us in the public health field face nowadays because you're not going to get people to try something that they don't feel encouraged, enthusiastic, and safe about using. Safe both physically as well as socially, interpersonally, legally, 